Today's topic is 5.3, Mutually Exclusive Events, and that's on pages 328 to 343. We're looking at our curriculum outcome of extending understanding of odds and probability. And our lesson objectives, to learn what mutually exclusive events actually are, to learn how to calculate probabilities of mutually exclusive events, and to be able to use a Venn diagram to help calculate probabilities for mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive events are events that cannot occur at the same time. For example, um, rolling an even number in a five with a single roll of a dice, that can't happen. Or, or picking one card out of a deck and getting an ace and a face card, that can't happen either. So when events are mutually exclusive, then the probability of event A or event B occurring is, and here's probability of A, remember this symbol means or, probability of A or B happening is the probability of A plus probability of B. And that mutually exclusive means that they have no elements in common. So for example, it says when rolling a die, what's the probability that you will roll an even number or a three? Well, the probability of an even number or a three is going to be the same thing as the probability of an even number plus the probability of a three. So the probability, if you're with a regular dice, of rolling an even number, well, that's three out of six. Remember that you have your favorable outcomes divided by your total outcomes. And the probability of a three is just one out of six. So your total probability would be four out of six or two thirds. When events are not mutually exclusive, now not mutually exclusive means that there are some elements in common. Then the probability of an event A or event B occurring is, so probability of A or B is probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B occurring. So if you remember your Venn diagrams, which you need to know for this unit, if we have probability of A and the probability of B, and this part right in here that's in common, that is probability of A and B occurring. And we need to subtract that, because if we said the probability of A is everything in the, in the A circle and the probability of B is everything in the B circle, then we would, would have counted this area twice. And that's why we subtract. So example, it says when rolling two dice, what is the probability that you will roll a sum that is an even number or a sum that is greater than eight? So here's our total number of outcomes. If we have the two dice and we're gonna add their totals together, we get anywhere from 2 to 12 when we add them. So when we're going to find the probability of an even number or a number that's greater than 8 is going to equal to probability of an even number plus probability of a number greater than 8 minus the probability of an even number and a number greater than 8. So probability of an even number, well we have 36 outcomes, so our total number of outcomes is 36. And half of those are even, so that's 18 over 36. Probability of a number greater than 8 would be a 9, 10, 11, or a 12. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 of those. Minus the probability that it's an even number and greater than 8. Well, the only even numbers that are greater than 8 are 10 and 12. And there are 4 of those, so that's 4 out of 36. So what we end up is 18 plus 10, which is 28 minus 4, which is 24, over 36, and that reduces down into 2 thirds. So you have a 2 and 3 chance of rolling a number that is greater than 8, uh, the sum of a number that is greater than 8, or an even number. If 62% of students skip breakfast and 24% skip lunch, 22 eat both breakfast and lunch, then we're going to determine the following three things. So part A says if skipping breakfast and skipping lunch are mutually exclusive events. Well, if they're mutually exclusive, then if we add them together, all these probabilities together, we should get 100. But when we add all these probabilities together, we get 108%, which says they're not mutually exclusive because 8% have been counted twice. Now part B, the probability that a randomly selected student skips breakfast but not lunch, this is where our Venn diagrams can come in handy. So if we have students skipping breakfast and students skipping lunch, then we've got 8% um, of them skipping both. So that means that that 8% goes there. We've got 22% that eat both breakfast and lunch, so they're not skipping either breakfast or lunch. So they go on the outside. Now, 62% of students skip breakfast, but 8% of those skip them both. So that means that the remainder, if you subtract those, which is 54%, would uh, then skip only breakfast. And that answers part B. Now, part C 
So there's a probability that a randomly selected student skips at least one of breakfast or lunch. That means they could be skipping breakfast only, they could be skipping breakfast and lunch both, or they could be skipping lunch only. So what we need to do is just fill in this last part. Well, 24% skip lunch, 8% skip both. If we subtract those, we get 16%. So that means to answer our final question, if they skip one of breakfast or lunch, well, that's 54% plus 8% plus 16%. Because it could be breakfast, it could be lunch, or, or it could be both. And when we add those together, we get 78% of students that skip at least breakfast or lunch. So our summary, the way that you answer probability questions depends on whether the events are mutually exclusive or not. If they are mutually exclusive, so if they have nothing to do with each other, you can just add their probabilities. But if there are elements that overlap, so they're not mutually exclusive, that means you add their probabilities, but then you subtract the probability of them both occurring. Um, the Venn diagrams can help you organize information in order to get a better idea of what you're trying to find. I always recommend, if you can, to draw a Venn diagram or some other way to organize your information. And your assignment is on pages 338 to 343. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.